Hi there, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me today. My name is Amanda, and I cannot wait to teach you all about how to use Padlet Backpack. Now, you may be wondering, what is Padlet? Padlet is a place to make beautiful boards, documents, and web pages that are easy to read and fun to contribute to. Here, we see eight different Padlet formats, which we will review in more detail in just a bit. Now, what are the uses of Padlet? Padlet can be used in a variety of ways. One example is as a brainstorming tool. Here, we see posts with students' opinions on a documentary regarding climate change. Padlet can also be used as a notice board, which can be helpful for teachers posting any resources. Padlet can also be used as a greeting card, which can help you celebrate students' birthdays during online learning. Padlet can also be used as a journal, such as if students have any assignments where they need to write reflections or journal entries. Padlet can even be used as a vision board, such as if students need to do any project preparation. Padlet can also be used as a photo album if there are any art or photography classes being taught. Padlet can even be used as a weekly planner as well, where teachers can lay out the entire week with assignments and resources included. Finally, Padlet can be used as a travel planner, say if a French class or club is planning their trip to Paris. Now that we have gone over the various uses of Padlet, let's explore how to make a Padlet. To make a Padlet, you will need to go to your school's unique Padlet domain, which will always end in padlet.org. Be sure to type .org as Padlet.com refers to any free or pro accounts. Now, this is the dashboard that we are going to see once we log into our account. To make a Padlet, click on this pink button here titled Make a Padlet. Let's do just that. Ah uh, yes, here are the eight different formats that we just saw a few minutes ago. Let's explore them in a bit more detail. We have wall, which arranges content in a brick-like layout, canvas, where you can connect posts with arrows, stream, where content is displayed in a top to bottom feed, grid, where you can arrange content in rows, shelf, where you can arrange content in columns, back channel, where you can communicate in a chat, mat, map, where you can pinpoint content to a particular location, and Timeline, where you can arrange content on a horizontal timeline. For our purposes today, we are going to choose the wall format, so let's click Select. Once you select your Padlet format, you will see this window appear on the right. The first thing you are going to want to do is edit your title. We are going to change the title to Favorite Dog Breeds. Then you can edit the description, pick an icon, and copy the link to your clipboard. Over here we have different appearance-based features. For instance, you can change the wallpaper on your Padlet either by selecting from a preset wallpaper or by uploading your own. We are going to choose a preset photo. Hmm, how about this beautiful cherry blossom image? You can also edit the color scheme, and the font of your Padlet. Over here, we have several different posting features. The first one is attribution. You're going to want to turn this on if you would like the names of your contributors to appear on their posts. Most of the time, you should pick this as having anonymous posts can become rather confusing. Next, you can decide if you would like your post to appear first or last. Then you can decide if you would like your viewers to be able to comment on posts. Over here, we have a reactions feature, which is similar to what you may see on social media. 
You can like, vote, star, or grade posts. We're going to choose like. Down over here, we have two different content filtering options. The first is called require approval. If you turn this feature on, any posts your students make will appear first to you, at which point you can decide if you would like to approve them. Should you choose to approve them, only then will their posts appear to all the other students in your classroom. This can be an excellent safeguarding measure to protect your students from inappropriate content. We also have the option to filter profanity as well. And down here, you can also choose to map your domain. Once you have decided on which settings you would like for your Padlet, we are going to go over here and click Next. You're all set. Post to your heart's content. All right, so now let's start posting. To make a post on your Padlet, you will need to click on the pink plus sign in the lower right hand corner. Here, you will be prompted to make a title for your post. Because the title of our Padlet is Favorite Dog Breeds, I'm going to write down my favorite dog breed as the title. And my favorite dog breed is the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. I can add subtext as well. So I'm going to write, I have two. Down here, we have several more options to accentuate your posts. You can upload a file, add a link, search images or videos from the web, and take a photo directly from your Padlet account. If we click on these three dots here, we will see that we can also make a drawing, as well as add a location or link or Padlet to another Padlet. So now that we've explored how to make a post, we're going to review our settings in the upper right hand corner. This little heart up here allows you to like a Padlet. This remake feature allows you to create your own copy of a Padlet you like without affecting the original. This is similar to saving a Word document under a new name. You can choose to copy the design, the posts, the people, the privacy, or the authorship. Once you click Submit, you'll find both the remade and the original Padlet on your dashboard. Over here, we have our share settings. These are quite important. Here, we have the option to add specific people to our Padlet by searching their name, username, or email addresses. After you've done that, make sure to click Save. As for privacy settings with Padlet Backpack, we have four different options. To view them, let's click Change Privacy. Our four options for Padlet Backpack are Organization-wide, Secret, Password, and Private. Organization-wide is a setting that you are only going to want to choose if you want the Padlet you make to appear on the dashboards of every other student and teacher in your school or district. You will likely only need to choose this option if you need to share details regarding a school-wide event, assembly, or policy change. Most of the time, you will want to choose Secret. In this case, your Padlet will be hidden from the public but if you choose to share it with an individual or a group, they should be able to access it. We also have a password protected privacy setting and a completely private privacy setting where no one can access your Padlet even if they try. Over here, we have three different visitor permission options, can read, can write, and can edit. You will want to choose can read if your Padlet showcases student resources and you do not want anyone else adding to the Padlet. Can write can be a great option if students are completing any assignments directly on the Padlet, such as with a discussion board. Can edit is a great choice if you and another teacher are collaborating on a Padlet and you trust each other to edit and approve each other's posts. Once you have decided which privacy settings you would like, you will need to click Save in the upper right-hand corner. Now over here, we have various options for how to share your Padlet. You can copy the link to your clipboard 
embed in your blog or website, share in Google Classroom, and more. We also have five different export options, such as saving your Padlet as an image, saving your Padlet as a CSV file, or printing your Padlet. Once you have chosen your share options, go over here and click Close. Now we are going to explore this gear icon. Now, you might be thinking, I've seen this before. Why, yes you have. Say for instance, you've already started making your Padlet and you realize, gosh, I really don't want cherry blossoms as my wallpaper. Instead, I really want cupcakes. Well, you can do just that. Essentially, never feel stuck if you realize that a setting choice you made is not what you intend after all. When you're done making your edits, just go up here and click Save. Now we are going to explore these three dots right here. These three dots showcase several more settings that are an option to you. For instance, entering full screen, clearing all the posts on your Padlet, or changing the format. You can change the entire format of your Padlet even after you've made posts. Let's explore how that works. Here we have the seven different formats that we didn't initially choose. Say you realize you actually want your content to appear in a timeline. Simply click on timeline and watch Padlet work its magic. Or say for instance you realize you want to create a brainstorming board and would like to connect content with arrows. You can go ahead and click on canvas. So because our Padlet is titled Favorite Dog Breeds, let's add a post with another popular dog breed, the Golden Retriever. Say you want to connect the Cavalier with an arrow to the Golden Retriever. Well, how do you do this? You will hover over your post and click on these three dots. Then you will click Connect to a Post. Once you do that, you will be able to choose which other post you would like to connect it to. And there you have it. Now your posts are connected by an arrow. Now that we've explored how to make a Padlet and how to navigate our settings, let's go back to our dashboard by clicking Padlet right here. Not only can you make a Padlet, but you can also join a Padlet by adding a link here. We also have this beautiful gallery option available where you can view previously made Padlets by other users or our team. Any Padlets you see here can be remade and edited to your liking. Say for instance, you really enjoy this first grade bookshelf Padlet. Well, you can go ahead and remake it and edit it to include books that you recommend to your students. Now we will go back to our dashboard. Over here, we see this blue Manage People button. This button will only appear on the dashboards of your admin and teacher accounts. Here, admins and teachers can choose to add any new students or view the profiles of existing students. Admins can also delete students in case a student leaves your school. Now, let's explore the various folders that you can place your Padlets into. Any palettes you recently made will appear under Recents. Any palettes you've ever made will appear under Made. This is important to note, as sometimes users will wonder, what happened to that Padlet I made two months ago? Now, the reason they can't find it is because they are looking under Recents, when in fact, they should be looking under Made. We also have folders for any palettes you've ever shared, liked, or archived. So what is archiving a Padlet? You can choose to archive a Padlet if you do not wish to delete it anytime soon, but you also do not need to work on it in the near future. So how do you archive a Padlet? Well, you click on these three dots right here and click Archive. Once you do that, you will see that your Padlet has been added to the archived folder. Now, say you realize you actually want to add to your Padlet after all. You can unarchive your Padlet also by clicking on these three dots again and clicking unarchive. And there you have it. It's back to our Recents folder. Finally, you can make your own folders with titles of your choosing. Last but not least, 
This icon here is our avatar. If we click on our avatar, we can view our account settings. Under basic info, we will see our username and email. Under password, we can change our password. And under communication, we can edit how often we would like to receive updates from Padlet. For backpack accounts, we also have an organization info tab. Here you will see the name of your school, your school logo, your web address, the ability to enable third-party login from Google or Microsoft, the ability to create student accounts automatically, and the ability to set your default privacy settings. Once everything is to your liking, go ahead and click Save. All right, we hope you've enjoyed learning about how to use Padlet. If you have any questions at all, please click on this question mark here and go to our knowledge base, where you can find articles with answers to the most common questions asked. Thank you very much for listening, and we hope you all have a wonderful day.